Journalist Eduardo Manzano works as a reporter in Cali, Colombia. Recently, he had denounced intimidation and threats by members of the paramilitary, drug cartels, and dissidents of the FARC who did not comply with the peace agreement. I consider the threats even worse than the ones I received before. I give them all the importance as before. Manzano and for other journalists received death threats because they were investigating the drug trade in the southwest of Colombia. Reporters received several phone calls. The same day, indigenous leaders were threatened by the Mexico Sinaloa cartel. They threaten us because we were reporting about the power outages and the illicit crops. During the time we were receiving the calls, four indigenous people were killed, and one of them was our guide during our coverage. When the peace agreement was signed in 2016, some FARC members were not happy with the demobilization. Some of them abandoned the process and rearmed. They are not external actors. It is a broken criminal infrastructure that occurred after the demobilization of the FARC. Now we have an increase in coca crops in fewer municipalities. For Alejandra Barrios, director of the Electoral Observation Mission in Colombia, the acts of violence are all evidence of a power struggle in Colombia. It's about who is really in charge of Colombia. Are we talking about a democratic institution or armed criminal gangs, drug trafficking and other illegal economies? Eduardo Manzano has left Colombia and now is living in Dallas, Texas for security reasons. He indicated that the work he was doing was a risk for those criminal organizations and he did not want to put his family in danger. The Committee to Protect Journalists reports that between 1992 and 2019, 51 journalists were killed while doing their work. Celia Mendoza, VOA News, Bogotá, Colombia.